Welcome to Never a Truer Word, where we look at the words that people choose to use to see if they're telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And in this episode, we're going to look at the phone call, the 911 call that followed the stabbing and death of Robert Wone. I love looking at 911 calls, at emergency calls, for a couple of reasons. There's a sense of immediacy to them. So normally they happen very soon after the incident has taken place. So the, the recall in them is very good. Uh, sometimes they happen when is when it's the right time for the person to call if there's some deception involved. And the other thing I really like about 911 calls is their high stress situations. And when there's high stress, then there's a chance of things leaking out because yeah, I've called 911 or 999 in this country before. And even though I'm just reporting something I've seen or something I've witnessed, I'm, I feel stressful um, when I'm on those calls. So we will see that stress. And when people are under stress, that's when their words can leak information to us. The call we're going to look at in this episode follows the death of Robert Wone. Someone suggested that this call would be something I might like to analyze, and I had to listen to it, and I thought, yes, this is fertile ground for analysis. Uh, looked a little bit at the story and then went, no, I'm not going to do that because I don't like looking at background. I like looking at words and statements when I know as little as possible. It helps avoid confirmation bias or going down roads where I already know what's happened. So, I haven't done a lot of digging into this case. This is what I do know about this. Robert Wone died in 2006. He was stabbed inside the home of friends that he was visiting one evening. As far as I know, this is an unsolved case, or at least no one has been found guilty of the murder uh, of Robert Wone. The other thing to know is the person making this phone call is a male. I don't know who it is, um, apart from what we will hear in the call and some identifying information. But the person making the call is male. But as you'll hear as we go, the operator misgenders them and calls them mom a lot. Now, why is that important? Well, they're never corrected. Uh, the, the, this person, this male, never corrects the operator who calls them ma'am. And why would that be? That's interesting in itself. Why would you not correct someone who's calling you by the wrong title? Uh, it could be that you have more important things on your mind. Your friend has been stabbed and is lying critically, severely injured inside your house. And so correcting this just seems really trivial at the moment. Potentially they misheard and they, they think the operator's calling them man. That's another reason. Or you could be trying to keep that operator on side. You don't want to do anything that's going to rub this operator the wrong way. It's really important to you to have a good relationship with this operator. All of those things are possible. As always, I want to do more than just look and say, this is what I think happened based on the words that are there. I want to get let you get some information and get some learning as to how you can analyze words in your everyday life. So as we go through this, first thing I want to say is believe everything you hear. It's really easy when we look at something like this to go, ah, there must be deception involved and I'm going to spot the lies. But actually, you will learn so much more if you believe everything you hear, you take it at face value, you take it as the truth. You might question why things have been stated in certain ways, certain word choices and certain phrase choices you can question. And then if you notice some contradictions, you can question those too. But believe everything you hear in the first place and watch for pronoun use. Words like I, we, our us. It's going to reveal quite a lot in this call, I think. This analysis has taken about 10 hours to put together in total. It'll take you about 10 microseconds to press the like button. And that means that the mission to get this to as many people as possible will be helped by you pressing the like button. So if you could do that, that would be most grateful for that as well. If you want to share it with someone you think who would be interested, please share it as well. Comments, I'm always really happy to hear. So if you can comment on this platform or if you want to get in touch on social media, then please do that. And if you've got any more suggestions of 911 calls or any words or statements that you'd like to see analyzed on this channel, then please do so there as well. If we get enough comments on this uh, episode, then we may do a follow-up one where we deal with some of the comments. If you've got any observations or questions on, on what you hear as we go along, that would be great. And the subscribe or follow button is a way of making sure that you get more episodes like this delivered directly to your advice. So let's listen to this 911 call then. Uh, this is part one. D.C. Emergency 911 Operator 6752. Do you need police, fire, or ambulance? What's wrong, ma'am? We just, uh, we had someone that was in our house, evidently, and they stabbed somebody. 
Okay, somebody's inside the house now? I don't know. We heard. Are they bleeding? You see someone yes. bleeding? Someone is bleeding in our house. Okay, where is they bleeding from? Uh, I think he's, I think in the stomach. In the stomach? Is he cautious? Uh, Calm down for me. I'm going to send some help, okay? Female or male? It's a male. He's a friend of ours. He was spent, he was spending the night with us. So part one there starts with the operator taking the call, says emergency 911, operator 6752, do you need police, fire or ambulance? Then there's something unclear and we need an ambulance. What's wrong, ma'am? There was this, uh, we had someone and then there's something again unclear, maybe the word us is in there, in our house evidently and they stabbed somebody. Now, this is 2006 recording and phone lines weren't as advanced as they are now. So there's some unclear parts to this phone call. And the very first thing he says when he's asked, do you need fire police or ambulance? He says something and I can't make out what it is. If you can, if you've got super hearing or, or some insight into what it was that he said, then do put it in the comments or get in touch on social media and let me know. Because that very first thing that he says is important. It's the most important thing in his head for him to say at that point. To the question, do you need fire, police or ambulance? That's his priority. It's the big thing in his head. And I can't make it out, sadly. But once we get that, we hear we need an ambulance. Um, so that, again, if the unclear part is the big priority, then the second priority, quite rightly, if someone has been stabbed in your house, is we need an ambulance. But you'll notice that he thinks that someone has been in their house, an intruder has stabbed someone in their house, and he's only asking for an ambulance. Why not the police as well? He's asked, do you need fire, police or ambulance? And he only asks for an ambulance. So why not the police as well? Now, before you go, yeah, there's a gotcha moment. That is not how this works. We've got seven minutes of a 911 call. We're going to go through it and we're going to collect observations and opinions as we go through it. So this is not, they didn't ask for the police. They are trying to hide something. They're trying to cover something up. That's not how this works. It's just a data point at this point that his priority was getting an ambulance and not getting the police there. I said looking for pronouns. Uh, we need an ambulance, is what he says to the, the call. And we had someone in our house. So we need an ambulance, not the victim needs an ambulance. You know, it's we. So I'm not sure who the we is. Maybe it's him and the victim. But actually, we had somebody in our house. Uh, so this is him and his partner who have the house, I believe, is the we. Uh, but really interesting there. Um, it's we need an ambulance. It's not I need an ambulance. Do you need fire, police, or ambulance? We need an ambulance. So I think there's a feeling here starting to come in for me that him and his partner or him and other people in the house are his priority in getting the help here. Again, this is not, wow, they must be guilty. They need the ambulance. But why is he not asking for the ambulance for the victim? As well, this victim, Robert, was a friend of theirs. They stabbed somebody. Somebody is quite a distant, you know, it's almost like you don't know who that person is. That's how you, you we had someone in the house. They, they're trying to say they don't know who that is. Just someone was in the house and they stabbed somebody. Uh, is uh, There's distancing there. Does he not feel a connection with this friend that's been stabbed for some reason? Or was it not really his friend? Was it a friend of someone else in the house? I don't know. But he, they've referred to Robert, who he's going to say is his friend. They referred to Robert as just somebody. This is going to become important uh, later on. You'll notice that the intruder that they talk about, the person that did this stabbing, is referred to, or their location is referred to in the past tense. There was this, uh, we had somebody in our house, evidently. So, um, yeah, that, that's in the past tense. As if they're, in the words there, they're no longer in the house. We had someone in the house means that they're no longer in the house. There was this person or, or whatever it is they're going to say before they change their mind. So the person was in the house, past tense. And evidently, there's no certainty. It was in our house, evidently. There's no certainty in the words there that someone really was in the house. It's not stated factually. It's stated evidently. The operator asks, okay, somebody is inside the house now. And the reply is, I don't know. We heard, and they get cut off. Are they bleeding? Yes, somebody is bleeding in our house. 
Now, is somebody inside the house now? Now, he thinks here that um, we're talking about the attacker, I guess, because they know that Robert is inside the house, um, having been attacked, having been stabbed uh, and bleeding. So I don't know. Must be them thinking about the attacker. I don't know is a really reliable form of answering a question. One that can be answered yes or no. So is somebody inside the house now? You've got some possibilities. Yes, somebody is inside the house now. No, that person is not inside the house now. I don't know. Truthful people really don't mind saying, I don't know. They just know the truth. They know what they know. And if they don't know something, truthful people in general don't mind saying, I don't know. Liars don't like that vagueness. Don't like the vagueness of I don't know. So I don't know is interesting that he's used that. Well, then, does he start telling a story here? We heard, and he does get cut off, but it feels to me like he's going to start explaining things. He wasn't asked what they heard. He's just going to start saying what they heard. And quite often in 911 calls with some deception in them, the person making the call is going to want to start telling a story that's going to be the story they tell about events all the time. And so it's really important for them to get that story out. So when they're not asked a question that leads to an element of the story, they still feel that they should be forcing that story in there in case they don't get a chance, in case a question doesn't come that gives them a, the chance to tell that story. And I wonder if that's what's happening here. We heard, you're, you're not asked, what did you hear? But you're saying, we heard. Again, he's talking from not his point of view. He's saying what we heard. So he's saying what him and someone else heard. Um, why is he not just talking about his own experience? Why is he talking about the experience of more him? Because him, he is part of we, but the experience of him and someone else. But look, the operator wasn't asking about the attacker because they said, is somebody inside the house now? Are they bleeding? So they were talking about the victim. They were talking about Robert. So they have been asked the question, somebody, and they have assumed they have prioritized answering about the attacker and not the victim, which, you know, they, they wanted an ambulance because this guy is in a bad way. They are bleeding in the house. But well, instead of assuming this was a question about the victim, the priority for them, so the person they assumed that was being spoken about, is this intruder and this attacker. The priority is the attacker. That is very interesting. That's a data point to remember. And once more, Robert Wohn, their friend, is referred to as someone. Yes, someone is bleeding in our house. Now, that those could be words. If you went into a room in your house just now and saw someone you'd never seen before bleeding in that room, that's how you'd talk about them. Yes, someone is bleeding inside our house. Very distant, very remote. Not he is bleeding inside our house or our friend is bleeding inside our house. This is very distant and very remote. Someone is bleeding inside our house. And once again, bit of a joint pronoun, our house. So this is really coming from more than one person, all this speech. We heard this, someone is bleeding in our house. The operator asks, okay, where are they bleeding from? And the reply is, I, I think he's, I think it's the stomach. The operator asks, the stomach, is he conscious? And it, the reply is, uh, the operator says, calm down for me, ma'am. I'm going to send some help, okay? Female or a male? And the reply is, it's a male. He's a friend of ours. He was spent, he was spending the night with us. The first thing I noticed here is the stutter. So where, where are they bleeding from? I I think he's, I think it's the stomach. Um, stutters usually come with stress. So why is this question stressed here? A couple of reasons. Someone's bleeding in your house. That is a stressful situation. Um, but um, it also could be, I need to, am I going to say the right thing here? Am I going to use the right words that match my story? I need some thinking time or I'm a bit stressed about it. So I'm going to stutter. I'm going to just check what it is that I am saying here. And so I'm going to stutter until I get the words out. He moves away from talking about we and us in the answer to that. He says, I, I think he's, 
I think it's the stomach. So he's moved from talking about what we heard and things happening in our house, and he's talking from his own point of view here. He's taking ownership of it. Now, that can be another reason why people stutter. It's a big thing to own words and put yourself in there. Where are they bleeding from? The stomach would not be putting himself in there at all, uh, but he has put himself in. I, I think he's, I think it's the stomach. Notice that he says he thinks, I think he's, I think that it's the stomach. So he's not definite about it. This is only what he thinks, uh, where the bleeding is coming from. I think he's, I think it's the stomach. And I noticed this very, very certain that a stabbing has happened. And you'll see this all the way through the call that very certain he was stabbed is what he will say all the way through the call. But here, when it's about the condition of the victim, there's vagueness, there's I think it's the stomach. Again, a question about the victim is asked next, the stomach, is he conscious? And the reply is, uh. And now, I, I really don't know what happened in that house, but I don't think that's a hard question to answer. Is he conscious? Yes, he's conscious. No, he's not conscious. Or I don't know. Instead, we get, uh, as an answer. Why is there no straightforward answer to that question about the condition of Robert Wohn at that time. Why is it uh? Why is it not yes, he's conscious or no, he's not conscious? The operator then goes on to ask about the gender. So female or a male? Um, and he says, it's a male. Now that was um, interesting for me. It's, again, somebody, somebody, this distance there and it's a male. That's how you talk about, um, you know, like a stray dog or something like that. It's a male, not he's a male or anything like that. No, it's a male. Very interesting. And you notice the question is female or male? And the answer, it's a male. Now that does answer female or male. And then goes on to say more that he wasn't asked for. So is this, again, that storytelling. When someone's asked a question and they give words that are more than satisfy answering the question, there is a reason for that. And what is his reason for wanting to say more than just what he's been asked? Potentially to get a story out there. He's a friend of ours. He was spent. He was spending the night with us. You'll see there again. He's gone from talking about himself. I think it's the stomach. To he's a friend of ours. He was spending the night with us. So again, he's gone back to telling this story from more than one point of view. And I was really intrigued by the use of the phrase, he was spending the night with us. That's quite an intimate phrase, spending the night with us. Do you want to spend the night with me? Very intimate form of wording. It wasn't he was visiting us, he was over playing cards, or he was over for a drink, or uh, he was spending the night with us. It's quite an intimate form of words there. Let's have the second segment of the 911 call. Okay. And who was the person that stabbed him? Do you know? Is he is, is he conscious? We need an ambulance. Ma'am, no, listen no, to me. He's not conscious. He's not conscious at all. No. We need someone right now. Is he breathing? Is listen, he... listen to me. Calm down. I'm going to help you. Okay. Is he breathing? I'm upstairs, and he's downstairs. I don't know. Okay. Who's downstairs with him? My partner is downstairs with him right now. He told me to go upstairs and call the police immediately. Okay, who's the person? Okay, I'm sending paramedics and the police. Okay, who's the person that stabbed him? I don't know. We think it's somebody with an intruder in the house. We heard the chime of the door. <laughs> and it's 15, ma'am, calm down. 1509 Swan Street, Northwest. Am I correct? Yes, it is. The person that stabbed him, is he still in the home? I don't know. We got help in route, okay? Pardon me? We have help in route. Thank you. <laughs> so that segment starts off with the operator saying, okay, and who was the person who stabbed him? Do you know? No answer comes immediately. The operator asks, is he unconscious? And uh, the caller says, we need an ambulance. The operator says, ma'am, listen to me. 
And the caller says he's not conscious. The operator asks, he's not conscious at all? And the caller says, no, we need someone right now. So questions and no answers come. Who was the person who stabbed him? Do you know? No answer comes. Is he conscious? And the reply is, we need an ambulance. So that's the second time that this guy's been asked the question, the question, is he conscious? And he does not answer the question. He doesn't provide an answer to the question, is he conscious? The operator's asking this, and it's fairly obvious, this is an important question to ask when you've got a stab victim inside your house and there is an ambulance paramedics on the way, uh, but no answer comes. Instead, we need an ambulance is what is said. And once more, it's we that need the ambulance, not the victim that needs the ambulance, it's we, which I believe is him talking about him and his partner, although it could be him and Robert, but I believe it's potentially him and his partner, and we need an ambulance is what he said, so there is a need for the ambulance, there is a sort of need, that, uh, uh, maybe not an urgency, but a requirement for an ambulance, but it's we that need it, not the victim. The uh, operator then says, ma'am, listen to me, because the operator wants the answer to the question, is he conscious? And this caller says, he's not conscious. So twice he has been asked, is the victim, is Robert conscious? And he has not answered the question. The first time, if you remember, it was the, uh, a second time, is he conscious? We got, we need an ambulance. Finally, he's able to state he's not conscious. Once more, He's asked, he's not conscious at all. No, we need someone right now. So we've got that we need again. It's not the victim needs, it's not that, it's we need. The operator then says, is he breathing? And no reply comes. The operator continues, listen to me, calm down. I'm going to help you, okay? Is he breathing? And the reply is, I'm upstairs and he's downstairs. I don't know. Okay, who's downstairs with him? asks the operator. My partner is downstairs with him right now. He told me to go upstairs and call the police immediately. And then there's something unclear again in the call. May include the word upstairs, but we've got enough there to work with. Once more, a question is asked about the status of Robert. Is he breathing? And there is no answer. So he is not answering quickly questions about the condition of Robert, the stab victim in this call. Why? is that? Why is he not answering these questions? He's asked again, is he breathing? And he says, I'm upstairs, he's downstairs, I don't know. So first of all, I've got, I'm upstairs, he's downstairs, he's starting to talk on his own. So I'm upstairs and he's downstairs, he's starting to talk, Robert, not as is somebody or it's, but he's actually, he's there using the pronoun he's which is a bit more closer than some of the ones we've seen so far. He says, I don't know. Again, I've discussed, I don't know is a reliable, um, uh, if you hear, I don't know, you can very often trust that as a reliable indicator that someone doesn't know. People who are being deceptive don't like to say, I don't know. People who are being truthful have no problem saying, I don't know. And he's given a reason here as to why I don't know. It's I'm upstairs and he's downstairs. As we go through this call, the position in the house gets mentioned a lot by this caller, but not the position as in I'm in the bedroom and they're in the living room or I'm in the kitchen and they're in the den or anything like that. It's always which floor of the house that um, the events are on and where people are. Never actually rooms mentioned. I don't know why that is, if you've got any ideas, then please do leave a comment. <clears throat> but um, it is, I don't think a room is actually mentioned in this house. Once, just the floors on the house. And I'll, I'd really like to know why that is and why the rooms themselves are not mentioned. He says, my partner is downstairs with him right now. He told me to go upstairs and call the police immediately. Now, told me and immediately, is there some control there by the partner or is this person who's making the call quite subservient, but they're certainly doing what they're told at the speed that they have been told to do that. Now, here's one for you. He told me to go upstairs and call the police immediately, not call for an ambulance immediately. Now, we've seen a lot in this call. It was the first thing that was done. We need an ambulance. 
and we need an ambulance has been repeated, we need help, we need someone quickly has been repeated a lot. But actually, in the words there, the partner said, go upstairs and call the police. Now, that could be a misspeak. It really could be a misspeak. It could have been, we need police in an ambulance, and this has just been said out loud as call the police. But very interestingly, I said, if you had an intruder in your house, why would you not call for the police as well as the ambulance? And the partner has said, call the police. But uh, that turned into calling an ambulance. He does say that he wants him to call the police immediately. So why did he have to go upstairs and call the police? That, does, that is not immediate. That doesn't make it as fast as possible. You know, there's a real urgent need for help here. Call 911 now. No, go upstairs and call. Why being told to go upstairs? Again, we've got this um, position of which floor of the house things happened on, happening here again. Uh, and this person had to go upstairs but do th some call the police immediately. Very interesting, that one. Um, and now, he, he's asked, who's downstairs with them? And my partner is downstairs with him right now, is the reply. So he's introduced the concept of being with him right now. Who's downstairs with him? My partner's downstairs with him. Would have been a perfectly fine and acceptable answer, but he's added the words right now. Why, why is that? Has someone else been with Robert previously? But right now, my partner's with him. Has a partner not always been with Robert? We don't know, but I'm interested as to why he's describing his partner as being with him right now. Potentially because someone else has been with Robert, I believe. The operator says, okay, I'm sending the paramedics and the police. Okay, who's the person who stabbed him? The reply is, I don't know. We think it's somebody with an intruder in the house. We heard the chime of the door and then there's some crying. The operator says, ma'am, calm down. 1509 Swan Street Northwest, am I correct? And the reply is, yes. And then there's something unclear, which sounds like more confirmation that that is the right address. The operator says, okay, who's the person who stabbed him? And the reply is, I don't know. So we have once again, this fairly reliable use of I don't know. Who's the person who stabbed him? I don't know. And what, but once again, we have more to the answer to the question. The operator says, who's the person who stabbed him? They answer that question with, I don't know. And then we think it's somebody, an intruder in the house. That answers the question. That deals with who's the person who stabbed him. And then we have more that wasn't asked for. We had what he heard or what we heard. We heard the chime of the door. Well, again, I get this feeling that they are answering the question and then they're using the opportunity of the question to get some storytelling out there, which is why... Um, instead of just saying, I don't know, we think it's an intruder, then there is talk of the chime of the door. Once again, look at the vagueness. We think it's somebody with an intruder in the house. So we have no certainty. They're not talking with certainty. They're not saying it was an intruder in the house. We just, we think there was an intruder in the house. So there's no certainty. When they talk about this intruder, it's just we think. Um, that it was somebody with an intruder in the house. And they're not really clear why they think it's an intruder. Think of some of the signs that there's been an intruder in your house, signs of a forced entry. Um, the fact that you were the only person in the house, but something has happened in the house. Um, or there is, you know, you knew what all the people in the house were doing. So if you and your partner were in the bedroom and something happened downstairs, but you were the only two people in the house, then you must know there was an intruder but we're not really clear on why they think it was an intruder in the house. Once more, this is a story coming from two people's point of view. We think it's somebody with an intruder in the house. We heard the chime of the door. So I'm starting to think, have two people colluded here to say, right, what's the story that we're going to tell? Right, so we did this, we did that, we did this, we did that, right. And so when this story is told on the phone, it always comes from the point of view of we, because was there some collusion in the storytelling? Because he could have answered, I don't know. I think there was an intruder in the house. I heard the chime of the door. But he's, th this is a two-person story that he keeps telling. I want you to remember that he chose to say there, we heard the chime of the door, yeah? We heard the chime. Later in the call, they're going to say that the chime was accompanied by a scream, a scream of Robert being stabbed. 
if you'd heard those two things, the door chime and the scream of one of your friends being stabbed, which one would be most memorable to you of those two? The one you hear every day or the one that was outright unusual, scary, shocking, petrifying? So why is it only here that he mentions the chime of the door um, when he's talking about what, what they heard and not the scream? That's really strange and odd to me, which is why I think we're telling stories here. The, the, the scream happened, that's matter of fact. The chime of the door, did that happen? I'm not so sure that actually happened and that's why that is the most important thing to be said. The scream's taken for granted, the scream's a matter of fact, it's a matter of record, but I need to get the chime of the door on record as well, as that's what is happening here. The operator says, the person that stabbed him, is he still in the home? And the answer is, I don't know. And then there's some crying. The operator says, we've got help on route, okay? And the caller says, pardon me, we have help on route. And then he says, thank you. And then they're here. So once more, the person that stabbed him, is he still in the home? I don't know. Now you remember when this call opened up, the call, the person, the intruder was in the past tense. He, we, he was, we had so they had left, the intruder at the start of the call had left the home, but now they are inside the home, or at least they could be inside the home. He says, I don't know. Now, I don't know is really reliable, but um, it contradicts what we heard before because the intruder was in the past tense. He's not telling a double story here. The person that stabbed him, is he still in the home? It's not, we don't know. We've seen so many we's, we heard. It's, I don't know. Interesting. Another interesting point for me is that the it's the operator that genders the intruder. The person that stabbed him, is he still in the home? So the operator has assumed it's a male that has done the stabbing. And I noticed throughout this call, the operator is the only person that puts male gender on the attacker. The caller actually does not deal with the gender of the attacker at all. They always call them someone or calls them they. We've seen a lot of we need help. The crying that takes place doesn't really help get that help to them urgently, does it? Um, it's not really helping get the most important information to get the help that it is that they need. Why is that crying happening? I don't know, but it's interesting. For all the urgency that appears to be in some of the language, the crying doesn't really help that. Let's continue with the call. They are being around to you now. I'm saying the police and the paramedics are coming to assist. Okay, what I need you to do is go downstairs, okay? The place where, wherever he was stabbed there, I need you to get a dry cloth, okay? And just apply pressure to that area. If he was, wherever he was stabbed at on his body, I need you to take a towel downstairs while you're waiting for the paramedics to arrive and just apply pressure. Even if the rag or towel is saturated with blood, just get another towel and put it on top, but never lift the first towel off the area. Hold it on. Once it gets filled up with blood, just put another towel on top of that and just apply pressure until the paramedics arrive. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In the heart? Yes. Okay. Is he breathing? Is he breathing? We have help him right now, okay? You don't know who it was? Okay, is he breathing? He's breathing, but he needs help now. Okay, we have help in route, ma'am, okay? We do have help in route. Okay, just go down there and try to tell your husband or your other um, the other half to just try to keep him calm and talk to him, okay? Yes. Keep him calm and talk to him until someone gets there. Okay. And at the same time, get a dry cloth and just hold it right there in the area. Yes, my partner's holding the... Okay. It, it, holding it on him. Okay, and once it gets saturated with blood, then I'm get another one. Go get another towel okay. so you can apply it on top of that one once it gets filled up with blood. Okay. We, need, well, we need you to apply pressure on that area. He is applying pressure right now. So this starts with the operator giving quite a lot of complex information about what should be done to help Robert about getting towels and applying it and how to apply um, pressure and not to take the towel off. And um, what I noticed is that this guy calling, he doesn't really engage with any of these instructions. 
We'll see that uh, earlier he has missed some questions, potentially because he's not listening. He's not giving it full attention. He's asked for clarification sometimes on some questions. He's given quite a lot of complex information a couple of times, and he doesn't really engage at all with the operator on what it is that needs to be done to help keep Robert in as best a condition as possible before the paramedics arrive. I'm interested. Why doesn't he engage that much, even just to say, I understand we're doing that? Once the really complex information has been delivered by the operator, then the operator says, once it gets filled up with blood, just put another towel on top of that and just apply pressure until the paramedics arrive. There's something unclear uh, from the caller. And then he says he was stabbed. He was stabbed in the heart. The operator says in the heart, there's something unclear. And then it's in the center of his chest. The operator says, okay, is he breathing? And the caller asks, is he breathing? I presume to his partner who is near the body, but we don't know. We have help on route now, says the operator. Okay. So we've gone from, remember, stabbed in the stomach to saying he was stabbed. He was stabbed in the heart in the center of the chest. Now, I don't know, maybe this guy is a medic and knows exactly where the heart is and where someone would have to be to be stabbed in the heart. But how does he know he was stabbed in the heart? Uh, and then he's very definite, stabbed in the center of the chest. Why the change from, I think he was stabbed in the stomach? He doesn't say, we don't know, but there's a discrepancy there. Earlier on, I think he was stabbed in the stomach and now with some defi de definiteness, he was stabbed in the heart in the center of the chest. And not just about definite about where the stabbing took place. Once again, he was stabbed. He was stabbed. So very definite that a stabbing has taken place here. Not so definite on the condition of Robert um, in the current time. Not so definite on we think there's been an intruder. Evidently there was an intruder. But very definite that Robert was stabbed. He still does not know whether he's breathing. Uh, so when the um, uh, operator says, is he breathing? He has to ask the question, is he breathing? So we still have this lack of um, firm knowledge about this condition of Robert at this time. The call continues with the operator saying, you don't know who it was. Something is unclear. Then I hear, I have no idea. Don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. The operator says one more time, okay, is he breathing? And he replies, he's breathing, but we need help now. Okay, help is en route, ma'am, okay? We do have help en route. Okay, just go down there and try to tell your husband or your other half to just try to keep him calm and talk to him, okay? Keep him calm and talk to him till someone gets there. And we get, okay, back from the caller. Now, I've said previously, we've had lots of I don't knows um, as answers to questions. And I don't knows are very believable. They are a hallmark of a truthful person. And having no idea is the opposite to that. We often have an idea about what's happened. We might have lots of ideas. We might have lots of ideas and no certainty. But we have, or I have no idea, or whatever it is he says here, but he definitely says have no idea is potentially deceptive and he does have an idea he has an idea that it was an intruder but he's just i have no idea who it was and we always have an idea the operator says okay is he breathing and he says he's breathing but we need help now now that's the first time in this call that this caller has been asked a question about the condition of robert one and the answer has come straight and factual He's breathing. That's the first time that has happened in that call. But once more, it's not Robert that needs help. It's we need help. There is some urgency. We need help now. And urgency is good in 911 calls. But we need help. Not he needs help. We need help. Why is everything about we needing help and not Robert? I'm a bit confused with some of this now because he appears to be, because he asked the question, is he breathing? He appears to now be in the same room as Robert, the victim, but we didn't hear him move. He didn't say he'd moved. The operator's confused as well because he, he, the operator has asked him to go back downstairs. Uh, so, yeah, that's interesting. The call continues. At the same time, get a dry cloth and just hold it right there in the area. And he says, my partner's holding the, he's holding it on him. 
The operator says, okay, once it gets saturated with blood, get another one. Go and get another towel that you can apply on top of that one once it gets filled up with blood. You need to apply pressure on the area. And the caller says, he is applying pressure right now. Now, we heard very complex instructions on what to do with the towel and the affected area. And he's saying, my partner's applying pressure right now. But did you hear him tell his partner what to do? Did you hear him pass on any of this really complex information that the operator passed on? I didn't, but apparently it has been passed on because that is what the partner's doing. Again, not any one of these things is a gotcha moment that there's something more happening in here, but there's lots building up for me here. When did he tell his partner what to do with the towel? How did his partner know what to do with the towel? I didn't hear him pass on any of that information, but in the story that he's telling, in the words that he's saying, it appears that information was passed on. Let's hear some more from the call. Okay, just hold it there until the paramedics get there. They should be pulling up any moment. If they're already en route to your location, you don't know who did this. We have no idea who did this. Is the door open so they can get in? We don't know how they got in. Okay, well, I'm asking you now, is the door open so the paramedics can get in once they get here? What? Sorry. What were you saying? Is the door open so they can get in? Is the okay. door open so the so the paramedics can get in the home? I'm going to go down. Is this a private home or apartment? It's, it's a home. It's a home. It's 1509 Swan Street, Northwest. The person has one of our knives. The person that stabbed him ran out the door with a knife? I, I think so. Uh, okay, anybody get any type of description of the person that came in the home? I have no idea. We have no description. We heard we heard the chime and and we heard the scream from our friends. Okay. And so we came running downstairs. We ran in. So you both was upstairs and your friend was downstairs. Yes. You heard the door open and then you heard the scream. We didn't I didn't hear the door open until after the scream and then we ran down the stairs and we heard we are we have an alarm. And so the chime went off. Okay. Is the ambulance, please? We really need the ambulance. Here. Okay. So this section of the call starts with the operator saying, okay, just hold his hand till the paramedics get there. They should be pulling up any moment. They're already en route to your location. You don't know who did this. The reply is, we have no idea who did this. The operator asks, is the door open so they can get it in? The reply is, we don't know how they got in. Okay, what I'm asking you now is the door open so the paramedics can get in once they are here. And the caller says, what? Sorry, what are you saying? We have the mention of no idea. Again, you don't know who did this. We have no idea who did this. You think it was an intruder, an attacker, but we have no idea who did this. Did this downplays it as well? We have no idea who stabbed our friend would be some um, reality to it. Did this is a bit distant, it's a bit downplaying. I will say the operator did ask, do you know, have no idea who did this? Um, but he does replay the phrase, did this. He's asked, you don't know who did this. And he replies, we have no idea who did this. So once more, we are getting this story from more than one person. The caller is telling a double story, at least uh, by including we. You don't know who did this. We have no idea who did this. This is an interesting bit. It's quite a clear question that the operator asks. Is, in current tense, is the door open so they can get in? Is the door open so they can get in? And the reply comes in the past tense. We don't know how they got in. So the operator has becomes very clear and is very clear in the question, actually, because she's saying that the paramedics are going to be there any moment. Is the door open so they can get in? And the reply is past tense. We don't know how they got in. Yeah. That's the second time that the operator has asked a question and he has mistaken the premise of the question and assumed or given an answer about the attacker. It's the second time he's assumed the question was about the attacker. The priority in his mind is this attacker and we don't know how they got in. Rather than the victim, rather than the help, the priority has been this attacker. The operator then says, I'm asking you, is the door open so the paramedics can get in once they are there? 
uh, and uh, sorry, what are you saying? That feels to me like playing for time. Potentially is playing for time. I don't know what the perfect answer is to this. I don't know what the answer is that matches the story that I'm trying to tell here. I realize I made a bit of a mistake by um, talking about how the attacker got in when actually we were trying to talk about how the paramedics are going to get in. I need to gather my thoughts. and I'm not entirely sure how to answer this question the perfect words for this right now. So I'm going to say, what, what, sorry, what are you saying? So the operator clarifies, is the door open so they can get in? Is the door open so the paramedics can get in the home? He says, I'm going to go downstairs, and it trails off. And the operator says, is this a private home or an apartment? The reply is, it's, it's a home. We've got him operating on his own for once. It's not we're going to go downstairs, it's I'm going to go downstairs. So he can talk for himself and he can say what he's going to do. Uh, but again, the pronouns are going to reveal quite a lot in this uh, call. So here, I'm going to go downstairs. He is going to go downstairs. And I want you to notice he's going to go downstairs. To let the paramedics in, he's going to go downstairs. He's quite open and honest about that, that he's going to go downstairs. This is a rare thing. The operator says, is this a private home or apartment? And he says, it, it's a home. It's a question and it's a very straightforward answer. And with a lot of questions, we've either had no answers, we've had some qualified answers, uh, we've had answers and then more that wasn't asked for in that sort of storytelling way. But this is it's a really simple factual question, right? You're not gonna lie about, is this a private home or an apartment? And this is how he deals with a question that he's not going to be deceiving on and for any reason whatsoever. And there's no storytelling that comes with this whatsoever. It's very straightforward. Is this a private home or apartment? It's a home. The operator asks, it's a question. There's an inflection at the end. It's a home. 1509 Swan Street Northwest. And the caller says, the person had one of our, and then there's something unclear, knives. The person had one of our knives. And the operator says, the person that stabbed him ran out the door with a knife. And he says, I, I, I think so. So this is not answering the question. Is it a private apartment or a home? It's a home. That's answering the question. But asking a question, 1509 Swan Street Northwest, question mark. It's not, no confirmation of the address. By the way, the paramedics and police are on the way and they need that help fast. But instead of confirming the address and giving them everything they need to get that help, they tell a story. The person had one of our knives. That does not answer the question that was asked. That is telling a story. Why is it important, instead of confirming the address, to say the person had one of our knives? Once again, there's jointness here. Our knives. The, the story is coming from two people. This is why I think there's a real possibility that a story was concocted before this 911 call. Here's the plan. Here's what we're going to say happened. Um, right, have we got everything straight? Okay, let's call 911. So we've, we both know, we were both in the same place. We both experienced the same things. We've got to stick together and tell the same story when we're asked. The person had one of our knives. And think of all the ways there are to describe a knife in your house. So... Um, it's a kitchen knife, or it's a sharp knife, or a big knife, or a small knife, or, but they have ownership of that knife. Why is it important to say it was one of their knives? The person's been stabbed, so we know they have a knife. This is not new information that they have a knife. The new information it is one of our knives. And when did they take time to find this out? Because the police were uh, called immediately, as far as we know, but somehow that this has been discovered that one of their knives has been taken. Was there the urgency to make this 911 call that it appears to be? Or was there a pause and time taken to find out that one of these knives was missing? Interesting, once again, this attacker is in the past tense. The person had one of our knives, not has one of our knives, or used one of our knives, had one of our knives. So past tense, the person had one of our knives. The operator clarifies, the person that stabbed him ran out the door with the knife. We have this stutter on I, again, which I've spoken about. 
putting yourself in there, committing yourself to what you're saying very personally, I can be stressful and you want to think about it. And people who are being a bit deceptive or being totally deceptive can stutter when they say I, and we get that stutter here. I, 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 I think so. And once again, when we're talking about the attacker, when we're talking about what happened, it's think so. There's no certainty there, certainty that the stabbing has been has happened, but there's no certainty about what happened there. There's not necessarily guilty knowledge, just no certainty what happened. But I want you to notice that in their mind and in their words, the person that stabbed him ran out the door, is what's asked, ran out the door, so he's no longer in the house. Because remember, we've seen this person um, being referred to as being an intruder in the past and was in the house, uh, ran out the door, so they are gone out the house. And he says, I think so. So he thinks, which, you know, when you think something is at your best guess, is at your feeling, whatever it is, it is kind of like where you think things are at. Uh, he thinks this person is out the house. At times he said he doesn't know if the person is in the house or not, but he thinks right now this person is out the house. The operator asks, okay, anybody, any type of description of the person that came in the home? I've no idea. We have no description. We heard, we heard the chime and then we heard the scream from our friend. Okay, says the operator. And so we came running down the stair, we came running downstairs. We ran in. So you both was upstairs and your friend was downstairs. Yes. Again, ask the question, do you have any type of description? No idea is the answer. No idea is just not as good for me as I don't know. Once again, we're getting this story from two people. I have no idea, but then we have no description. We heard, we heard the chime, we heard the scream. So there's all this story coming from two people once more. This person seems almost incapable of talking from themselves, only from their own point of view, even though they're being asked about their own point of view. Remember the scream that I mentioned? Well, this is where the scream is introduced. We heard the chime and then we heard the scream. Okay, now, we heard the chime and then we heard the scream. The chime came before the scream, which is the chime, I think, of a door opening when it's got an alarm system on it. We heard the chime and then we heard the scream. So the chime first, the scream second. More joint action here. We came running downstairs. We ran in. So this is a story once more from two people came running downstairs. I told you, they keep mentioning the position in the house vis-a-vis -vis the floors that they are on. Not the rooms that they are in, but the floors that they are on. We were upstairs. We had to go downstairs when we heard this scream. And so uh, is something that's interesting. Uh, there's a lot of um, work done on and so storytelling. That's when someone is telling a fictitious story. And this happened, so this happened. And they're not telling you events. They're telling you reasons for events. Um, so we heard the scream and we ran downstairs. No, it's, we heard the scream and so we came running downstairs. It's uh, an indication of storytelling. It's not just, an in, they don't just relay action and events, but they're giving reasons for actions, events leading to reasons. In all of this, there's something missing, which is not necessarily that it's been deceptively hidden, but I'm interested. Uh, he doesn't say where they were, what they were doing, when they heard this chime and the scream, you know, it's not we were asleep in bed or we were watching TV upstairs or anything like that and we heard the chime and we heard the screams, we came running downstairs. He just doesn't say where they were and what they were doing when the stabbing happened. The operator says, you heard the door open and then you heard a scream. And he says, we didn't. I didn't hear the door open until after the scream. And then we ran down the stairs and we heard or we have an alarm, and so the chime went off. Okay, says the operator. Is the ambulance, please? We really need the ambulance here. So we had previously the chime and then the scream, but here we have, I didn't hear the door open until after the scream. So the order has changed around here. And it was very clear, we heard the chime, and then we heard the scream. And then it changes again. We ran down the stairs and we heard, 
we have an alarm, the chime went off. We ran down the stairs and we heard the chime went off. So that is the third version of events that are told. Yeah, the third different ordering of when things happen. That's quite hard to screw up quite as much. And we have, and so again, and so the chime went off. I'm interested here. He starts talking from the point of view that we've expected here. We didn't. And then he says, I didn't hear the door open. So he goes to say, we didn't something. And he changes it. For once, he doesn't want to talk from the point of view of two people. He wants to change it to just his own point of view. We didn't. I didn't hear the door open until after the scream. Interesting. And then he said three different points, three different versions of events there. Um, and he says, is the ambulance, please. We really need the ambulance. Notice he says, we really need the ambulance once more. We really need the ambulance, not the victim, not Robert really needs the ambulance, but we really need the ambulance. But I think this is a distraction. I think he realizes I've screwed up here. I've said the chime went off and then there was a scream. Then I've said that we heard the scream, then the chime, and then we ran downstairs. Then I said we heard the scream, so we ran downstairs, and then we heard the chime. He's given three different versions of events. I think he realizes I've screwed up a bit here. I'm going to put pressure on getting the ambulance faster, which is why he says, is the ambulance, please, we really need the ambulance here. Let's get some more from the call. Okay, they in Rome they, they now, ma'am. Go to the door. They should be pulling up any moment, okay? I'm afraid to go downstairs. Okay, the person who's downstairs was the person that was assaulted. No, we're in the we're on the second floor. Okay, so somebody need to go to and open the door for the paramedics. If you're not sure if that person's still in the home or not. I have no idea. Okay, we have paramedics in row, Okay. What time is it? What time is it at the moment? Yes. Twenty-three fifty-four. It's eleven fifty-four, ma'am. Eleven fifty-four. Yes. I mean, I'll stay on the line with you. I will stay on the line until somebody gets here. Okay, I won't hang up. We need them right now. I'm not hanging up, but we. Need we need help now. Okay, they're in route, ma'am. They are in route. <sighs> Let me know when you hear the paramedics. Can you look out the window and see if you hear them coming? I'm, I'm looking out the window and I see nothing. I see nobody. Okay, it seems like forever, but they are in route, ma'am. They're coming. Here they are, here they are. They're there. <laughs> I'm going downstairs. Okay, I'll stand the line with you to open the door for the paramedics, okay? So after um, the caller asking for the, the urgency to be speeded up and getting the ambulance, the operator says, okay, they're on right now, ma'am. Go to the door. They should be pulling up any moment, okay? okay? And the caller says, I'm afraid to go downstairs. The operator says, okay, the person who's downstairs is the person that was assaulted. And he says, no, we're in the, we're on the second floor. So he's told to um, yeah, go to the door to get the paramedics. And he says, I'm afraid to go downstairs. Now, earlier, he had volunteered to go downstairs. When the operator had asked, is the door open? He said, I'm going to go downstairs. But all of a sudden, he's afraid to go downstairs. Why? And he doesn't say why he's afraid to go downstairs. He has alluded at times that he thinks the person that stabbed Robert is still in the house. At other times, he said that he thinks this person has ran away and this person was in the house. But here he is afraid to go downstairs. And he talks from his own point of view there. I'm afraid to go downstairs. So this is not the we. This is the I'm. The operator gets confused. I'm guessing this is a townhouse with um, not, not a first floor, second floor, but, you know, first, second, maybe third floor. Uh, and um, once again, we're in which floor of the house are people on? Which floor of the house people are on? Not which room people are on. And you'll notice here he says... No, we're in the, and then stops and says, we're on the second floor. It's as if he's about to say, we're in the lounge, we're in the kitchen, we're in the basement, whatever it is, you know, we're going to name a room, and he stops. He was going to say, we're in the, but he stops and changes it, we're on the second floor. I think which floor of the house he was on, or potentially which floor of the house people were on when the stabbing occurred, I think is a very sensitive point to this caller. The operator says, okay, so somebody needs to go open the door for the paramedics. You're not sure if that person's still in the home or not? And he says, we have no idea. What we got here, we've got repetition once more of no idea. 
you're not sure if the person's in the house or not. I don't know. Or I think they may be. But no, we have no idea. You have ideas. They're in the house. They're not in the house. You've said before, they've left the house. In your words, this person was in the house past term, past tense. And he's asked, you're not sure if that person's in the house. So this is personal question. You're not sure if that person's still in the house. And once more, he answers for more than himself. We have no idea. We then have this bit. Okay, we have the paramedics on route, okay, says the operator. And the caller says, what time is it? The operator asks, what time is it at the moment? Yes. 23.54, that's 11.54, ma'am. 11.54? Yes. Why? Why did he ask what time it was? I was going to say I have no idea, but that would be deceptive. I have ideas. Is this to have the time stamped in this call in some way? Is this to ask a question to take the heat because he was being asked questions about the intruder and we don't like telling lies, we don't like telling stories, we'd rather talk about things that are factual, safe ground, like what time is it, you know? Uh, when you've got nothing to talk to someone about, the weather, the time, what did you watch on TV, those sorts of things are safe ground, easy for us to talk about. Is that what's going on here? I don't know. If you've got any better ideas as to why he suddenly asks in the middle of this real urgent call what the time is, put them in the comments or get in touch on social media. I've no idea. Like I say, that means I've got some ideas about why they would ask what time it is the operator says i'll stay on the line with you i'll stay on the line until somebody gets there okay i won't hang up the caller says we need them right now i'm not hanging up but we we need help now okay they're on route ma'am they are on route there's some breathing and an ah we see here we need them right now we we need help now so not not one plea for help for the victim that I've heard so far in this call, but pleas for we, which I believe is him and his partner. Why do they need help more than the victim needs help? But there is a sense of urgency. We need them right now. We need help now. The operator says, let me know when you hear the paramedics. Can you look out of the window and see if you hear them coming? And he says, I'm, I'm looking out of the window and I see nothing. I see nobody. The operator says, okay, seems like forever, but they are on route, ma'am. They're coming. He says, thank you. Here they are. Here they are. Finally, again, he's talking for himself. I'm looking out of the window. I see nothing. I see nobody. And I highlight that just to say he can talk for himself. When he's doing something by himself, and I'm presuming the partner is still applying pressure, so the caller can go and look out the window. He can talk for himself. He can say, I'm looking out the window and I see nothing. So why, when he's asked questions about himself, personal questions, does he answer on behalf of we? The operator says, they're there, and there's some breathing. And then he says, I'm going downstairs. And the operator says, okay, I'll stay on the line with you until you open the door for the paramedics, okay? I'm going downstairs. The fright, the afraid, the scaredness of going downstairs has gone, apparently, because I'm going downstairs. Here's the last part of the call, and this is part of the 911 call, but I think in this, he is talking to the paramedics who have arrived at the door. Help us. We have someone with stabbed They're on our second floor. <laughs> Ma'am. No, it's really an emergency. I mean, he may be... He's hurry. <laughs> Ma'am, it's going to be okay. So the paramedics arrive and he says, help us. We have someone that's stabbed. They're on our second floor. And he starts crying. And he's saying to himself, what is this? What is this? The operator says, ma'am. And he says, oh God, no, it's really an emergency. He, there's something unclear in the call. Please hurry. And he starts crying. 
Do you see it there again? We have someone that's stabbed. No idea of the closeness at all. Our friend is stabbed. He's lying upstairs. Just we have someone that's stabbed. I found that a really interesting way to talk about a friend of yours that is in a critical condition inside your house. Uh, definitely a, mo a move of mode here. He starts crying and he starts talking to himself, which he hasn't done um, through this at all. Um, he's then going, what is this? What is this? Oh, God. And a lot of crying comes out, but only when the paramedics arrive. Something has changed. I get the paramedics have arrived. That has changed. But something has changed in this mode because the crying, uh, there was some crying earlier on in the call, but this is uncontrollable sobbing. Um, this is almost feeling sorry for himself. And what is this? What is this? And oh God is talking into himself. I also, this is really an emergency. You, know, I, you called 911 and said someone was stabbed and you didn't think it was really an emergency. Uh, uh, the operator says, ma'am, we'll be okay. And there's lots of crying. And then I think he says up the stairs, but it could be I'm scared. I don't, I couldn't 100% make it out. And then there is more crying. And that is the end of the call. So I said we were going to take data points all the way through the call and then observe and look at what that means at the end. And I see a lot of red flags in this call, a lot of things that aren't as they should be in a truthful, genuine, straightforward 911 call. Early storytelling, almost from the get-go, he's really keen to get across things that we heard, things that we experienced that are not asked for in the questions. There's no, well, there is, he wants to talk about the condition of the person, but he also wants to get a story there. The use of we in describing events and experiences makes me feel that this is a pre-planned, concocted story. The discrepancies, the intruder sometimes is in the past tense and then maybe in the house. The three different versions of what they heard, those discrepancies like that really worry me about this. There is a lack of care for the victim. They are someone, it's a male, um, and it's we need help, not the victim needs help. There is a real lack of care for the victim um, expressed in the words there. Plenty of past tense for the intruder, so the intruder is gone. And look, when you go through the call, the caller is very certain, very certain that Robert has been stabbed, that there has been a stabbing. He never says, I think he's been stabbed or I presume he's been stabbed. It's always he's been stabbed. Less certainty on the condition of the victim. Is he breathing? Uh, is he conscious? I don't know. Uh, that is very, very interesting to me and a red flag. Some other notes I have. I don't have any true sense of why there was an why they think there was an intruder in the house. You know, if there were 20 people inside the house and someone was stabbed, you wouldn't think it was an intruder that did it. And there's just no sense. I'm not saying there was 20 people, by the way. I'm just saying... There's no sense of why they think it's an intruder, why they ruled out any other possibility other than an intruder. The placement of where they are in the house in terms of floors, not rooms, in terms of floors in the house, seems really important to him. It seems like a big priority to him which floor things happened on. Missing any sense of what the caller and his partner were doing at the time of the stabbing. I find that very interesting. Also, missing any desire to have the intruder captured or identified. That was interesting as well. And no sense that if the intruder is in the house, there was certainly no sense from him that we needed the police and no worry about the paramedics coming in and finding the intruder in the house as well. So what have I got as a conclusion? Look, I don't think this caller stabbed the victim. But I think they know what happened or has been told what happened, but I didn't get the feeling they were being defensive or covering up for themselves. I got the feeling that they were in joint this with someone there. But I think he probably was in the house at the time. I think a cover story has been concocted and that is what is being told in this 911 call. I also think that he knows the condition of the victim was graver than he describes on the call. I don't think they called the 911 call was made as soon as they were aware of the stabbing. I think there was some time between the stabbing and the 911 call being made. And I think there was something intimate happening that night that is being hidden inside this call. So did you spot? Believe what you hear. Accept it as the truth, but question it. That means that you 
believe that the attacker was in the past tense, for example, and then all of a sudden when the attacker could be in the house, you're going, well, wait a minute, you actually, I believe the attacker was outside the house earlier. When you're studying words, believe what you hear, accept it as a truth, and you'll create a picture in your mind, and you, that will make analysis of words so much richer for you. But question it. Do question it. Accept it as the truth, but question it. And as I hope you've seen through that, pronouns reveal so much. The like button will help share this to many more people and help them get the knowledge that you have now that you have been through all of this. I'd love your comments, your questions, your observations on what you have heard. Uh, so please get involved in that. Maybe we will do a follow-up episode if we get enough questions or comments. Share this with anyone that you think would be uh, interested in this. That would be, I'd be so grateful if you could do that. Um, and also, if you want to subscribe or follow, you will get more content like this delivered whenever there's a new episode that will come to your device and if you want to dive deeper never a truer word.com where you will find more podcasts more videos sign up for the newsletter as well you can find out how to get in touch on social media and if you want to go even deeper there's a couple of books you can buy that look at how to analyze and investigate the words and statements that people use and we'll see you for another episode soon from never a truer word